Hello everyone, I'm Rob Smith of the In the Black VTF here at T3 Live with today's market wrap-up and uh, a bit of a snoozer here, but um, uh, a lot of things you can learn and a lot of things you can see here uh, coming in tomorrow's options expiration, so we'll get to that in a second. But uh, last night I talked about the SPY bill on inside day here, and so what occurred this morning is we had some weakness early from last night to overnight crude oil gapping down in the USO, and you can see this, and I'll get to that in a second, and then rallying back. So it started weak here, which give a, a little hurting on the market right out the chute. So if we go back to the, the uh, SPY, what, what happened was we came down, we just took out the inside day to the downside, rallied all the way back, took out yesterday's highs to go outside day, and then drop back into the middle. And so oftentimes you'll hear me talk about an outside bar being a fractal broadening formation triangle. And so this is what I mean. You can see this, takes out the lows, take, takes out the highs, and if you go down to a 30-minute chart, you're going to see this, higher high, lower low, couldn't make the higher high, lower low, higher high. If you go to the 15, you're going to see this, like this here, like that, and here, bang, 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 and then dropping back into the, into the range here. So uh, what does that mean? What that means is that in order to be considered trending, uh, obviously we want to take out today's highs or lows, and so that's going to be down here. Right? or all the way up in here, back into the highs. So we just went inside day, outside day. So the question is tomorrow, uh, do we get any more action, or do we dry up and go inside day again? So there's other ways to look at things when you say, well, that spy is untradeable or whatever. Uh, there's a couple things that uh, come to mind. So the question was, when we took the inside day to the downside, were we looking to go short? Maybe, but we're going to look for reconfirmations of anything. Most of the signals we have are to the upside. But the question is, when it came back into the range, do we have any reason to believe it was going to go all the way and take out the highs and go outside day? And if we take a look at what's gone on on the SPY on a monthly basis, we certainly do. Because today was very similar to the first day, the first week of the month, where it was an inside month. We took it out slightly and went outside right away. Now, in this case, we stayed above there. That's good. And if you look at the weekly, you're going to see this. Did it here. Down, all the way back outside, and then expands here once it takes that bar out. So we're look, certainly looking uh, for the to take out t today's highs or lows, and highs would be good. That would be an expansion of the volatility. Another way to look, that we look at things is uh, much when that uh, SPY monthly went down and then start, started to come back up, and appeared that it was going to take a shot at going outside, we wanted to look for things that were stronger, things that were too strong to take out last month's lows, and were taking out the highs, and that was your small cappers. If you look at the IWM here, too strong to take out that low monthly low, and still above that inside month and up. Another slow day there, but still uh, within the realm of what we're looking for. So another thing you want to look for, instead of just looking at the S&P SPY and saying, oh, it's taking out the highs and and whatnot is when SPY did this here and took out the highs of yesterday on your 30 up in here, it starts taking out the here. The question is whether it was going to hold up in here, right, as, a, as an outside day or drop back in. And so when you look through the sectors at that point, you wouldn't, FAS said no way. Uh, FAS couldn't get any steam going, and it, it's not like it's getting murdered. But uh, it stayed down, and at that point, it was pretty evident that the SPY was going to drop back in. So, uh, you know, if we take a look at those oils again, USO, we had some uh, data come out on that, and that was very nice here. Right on the 15 is where the news came out, and got a nice push there, then a 15 back down. Uh, but a lot of people are trying to catch all the, the bottoms and a lot of the bigger oils. And if you just go down the sectors, it continues to be the strength. It's still been in the refiners, and you can see MPC, and Valero, and then Tesoro. Tesoro was the strongest and then got hit here, and you can see one inside day and right back up toward the high. So if you're looking for strength, that's certainly where it's been. Uh, another thing, like I said, when we're looking at this, the, the monthly charts, just like the, on the monthly charts, we look at the daily charts. So when the SPY today started to come back up, <coughs> excuse me, what did we know to be true that was inside that was still holding up? And that was Facebook, for one. Inside day to the upside. And then just really... Strong trend all day long, bum, 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 and that was real nice. Another thing I talked about yesterday is that uh, the QQQ, not an inside day, 
and certainly much stronger going to the highs and hanging out in there and so what do we know to be true in there talked about this last night IBB. IBB goes to new all-time highs, inside weak consolidation back to the highs, and then if you break it down further, you can look at something like Regeneron goes inside weak and up there too. So um, for tomorrow, uh, you know, let's see, let's see another thing. We had uh, Akamai, and so Akamai is a good point, case in point here too. Inside day near the highs where some people might say it's getting overbought, but it's an inside day, and once that Q starts going and the SPY recovers and it takes that out, Certainly on the radar there, and uh, another good example of this is is getting the perspective. When somebody just looks at a shorter term chart, says this thing's overbought. I'm like, you sure about that? And they're like, yeah. Let's look at the weekly chart. Oh, it's definitely overbought. I'm like, you sure about that? Let's look at the monthly chart. Oh yeah, that's overbought. I'm like, are you sure about that? Let's take this out way out. Are you sure about that? Because it looks like to me like it's putting in a very long long base after many many moons so remember I always want to get that perspective when you're looking at charts so tomorrow we're also looking at adobe oh, let's get to the daily here so adobe has an inside day here just the same like an akamai we'll see how that goes oh uh, we can look at win resorts here is an inside day <coughs> trying to expand this triangle out of here or drop back in Presently, it's trying to take that inside month back to the upsides, but it is a doji on the week, and we want to be real careful about um, things that are around strikes when you get into the later hours because um, it, things will tend to pin to the option strikes, and the reason that occurs is because of the open interest. <coughs> Excuse me, a little under the weather here. Uh, because of the open interest, and so when you have a lot of open interest at a certain strike price, both the puts and the calls uh, – our sellers trying to get out of their positions with a, any slight gain they have, and that's why the pinning occurs. So we want to be aware of that. But inside day for win, and the Dow Jones, we had Boeing still going towards the highs, and you can see how strong this has been. Real nice. And so in, in the Dow Jones, we got Disney going as an inside day tomorrow. Uh, we've got, uh, let's take a look at Apple, because Apple uh, was an inside day that went to the upside. And you can see how it got out, but then comes back in, and this is a potential reversal. Not a major reversal to worry about, but because it rejected the inside break and comes back in as a shooting star, I'll certainly be looking for this on the short side below here, at least for tomorrow. Uh, if we take a look at uh, some of the high flyers recently, Zilla, and there were some good trades in there again, but Zilla goes inside day. And so we'll see where this thing wants to stop tomorrow. you got John Deere since the uh, Buffett news yesterday going as an inside day up there. And if we look at... Um, if we look at uh, Dow Theory and we look at the Dow and we look at the transports and we look at the utilities, here's the utilities going inside day. And remember, these broadening formations will become support and resistance. Here, bumps its head, goes inside. So the question is, can the utilities continue to come back up here? Utilities are blood red on the month. And then if we look at the transports here, oops, if we look at the transports right here, uh, the transports go daily shooting star, shoot all the way up and come back in. And so I want to see how that goes. And that's and it, there's an inverse relationship with the crude oil, so the crude oil firms up a little bit, or profit taking, who knows, because anytime on a Friday, Friday is a good day for counter trending, uh, as anything during the week that has moved, uh, people are more likely to take profits into the uh, into the weekend, and we have options expiration, so certainly paying attention to that. So um, oftentimes what we'll look for after an inside day than an outside day like we're having in the SPY is potentially going inside again um, as um, they said volatility will contract as things get near the strikes of the options so uh, we'll see there's always news out there we got earnings to keep an eye on all that kind of stuff so that's going to do it for today all right everybody I'm Rob Smith in the Black VTF here T3 Live with today's market wrap-up